What's the main organ of digestion? It's the pancreas. Mm -hmm. Most people think that all of their digestion happens in the stomach, but it is not true. Wake up. Your pancreas holds the key to perfect health, and Barbara O'Neill's mind-blowing discovery reveals powerful secrets to maintaining and improving pancreatic health. The pancreas is often overlooked, but it plays a vital role in regulating blood sugar levels and producing enzymes essential for digestion. When the pancreas is functioning optimally, it supports your body's overall health and prevents chronic conditions like diabetes. Diabetic affects the pancreas and insulin does it also turn, in turn affect digestion. Interesting with, um, with, the, with the pancreas, there are two hormones released into the blood from the pancreas, that's insulin and glucagon, and that balances the blood glucose levels in the blood. But the pancreas also releases these enzymes into the gut. So when the pancreas is not able to balance the blood glucose levels because it's not working very well, that absolutely can also affect digestion. So that's a very good question, it is true. However, neglecting this small but crucial organ can lead to serious health issues. Barbara O'Neill emphasizes the importance of understanding and caring for your pancreas, and she shares several natural remedies and lifestyle practices that can make a significant difference. Remedy 1. Avoid environmental toxins. Barbara O'Neill emphasizes the often overlooked role that environmental toxins play in compromising pancreatic health. The pancreas is particularly vulnerable to the harmful effects of toxins found in everyday items such as household cleaning products, pesticides, and even certain plastics. Fasting for a couple of days a week, especially if you've been exposed. What are some of the environmental poisons? Chemicals? Another in, and they can come in in many ways. Be careful what you're washing your hair with, your clothes with, what you're cleaning your teeth with. Be careful what you're eating. Go for organic as much as possible. Get a shovel, start digging, grow some veggies. These toxins can accumulate in the body over time, leading to oxidative stress and inflammation, which can damage pancreatic cells and impair their ability to produce insulin and other vital enzymes. Barbara O'Neill advises reducing exposure to environmental toxins as a proactive measure to protect your pancreas. This includes using natural, non-toxic cleaning products, choosing organic foods to minimize pesticide exposure, and avoiding plastic containers that may leach harmful chemicals like BPA into food and beverages. She also suggests incorporating detoxifying practices, such as regular consumption of antioxidant-rich foods, which help neutralize free radicals and support the pancreas's detoxification processes. So as the body detoxifies through the liver, as the environmental poisons are released, we need also to be mindful of our four main organs of elimination. And the largest organ of elimination is the skin. We don't think of this usually as an organ of elimination, but it is the largest organ of elimination. The skin absorbs, <coughs> the skin breathes, and the skin throws off waste. By minimizing toxin exposure and supporting the body's natural detox pathways, you can help safeguard your pancreas from unnecessary stress and damage, ensuring it remains healthy and functional for years to come. Remedy 2. Incorporate bitter foods into your diet. Barbara O'Neill sheds light on the lesser-known benefits of incorporating bitter foods into your diet for pancreatic health, revealing their multifaceted role in supporting digestion, detoxification, and metabolic balance. Bitter foods, such as dandelion greens, bitter melon, and arugula, have long been used in traditional medicine for their ability to stimulate the digestive system, but their benefits extend far beyond that. And I'm going to give you the recipe, and this tea has healed many a low hydrochloric acid. It is one part, uh, one part dandelion. Dandelion is a bitter herb. We learnt about dandelion this morning in our herb lecture, one part gentian. Gentian is, is an incredibly bitter herb. One part licorice. And licorice is a herb that has an emollient and that emollient helps to 
to coat the stomach and half a part of a very expensive herb called golden seal. And golden seal has a nickname and that nickname is king of tonics to all mucous membranes. Dandelion, gentian, licorice and golden seal are all roots and you need to boil roots. So the recipe, here's the recipe. So you buy these dried herbs and you put them all in a jar. You make up a whole jar. So the recipe is one teaspoon of this herb mix, we'll say herbs, and one teaspoon of ginger, fresh ginger. So the fresh ginger can be grated or it can be uh, chopped into small pieces. Two cups of water. And then that is a gentle simmer. So simmer for 10 minutes. The ginger certainly makes it more palatable because these three herbs are very bitter. And the ginger is a sweet bitter and the licorice also is a little sweet. It makes it palatable. Some people, when I give them that tea, they think I'm killing them. <laughs> <laughs> These bitter foods work by promoting the production of bile in the liver and pancreatic enzymes, both of which are crucial for the effective digestion of fats, proteins, and carbohydrates. Bile, produced by the liver and stored in the gallbladder, emulsifies fats, making them easier to break down and absorb. Meanwhile, pancreatic enzymes like lipase, protease, and amylase are responsible for breaking down fats, proteins, and carbohydrates, respectively. When these processes are functioning optimally, the pancreas can operate more efficiently, reducing the risk of digestive issues, such as bloating, indigestion, and fat malabsorption which can otherwise place undue stress on the pancreas. And she was living in a much happier environment, but her stomach function still wasn't working. You see, her, her stomach function had got into a habit of, of, of working a certain way. So even though she was now out of the stressful environment, she was still having trouble with digestion. So what these bitter herbs do, they actually retrain your stomach. They retrain your stomach so that it starts to work. It starts to release the herbs. And of course, at the same time, don't drink with the meals. But the benefits of bitter foods go even further. Barbara O'Neill emphasizes that by enhancing bile and enzyme production, bitter foods also support the body's natural detoxification processes. Bile acts as a carrier for toxins, helping to eliminate them from the body through the digestive tract. This detoxifying effect is particularly important in the modern world, where the pancreas is often burdened by environmental toxins, processed foods, and a high sugar diet. By incorporating bitter foods into your daily meals, you assist your pancreas in managing and neutralizing these toxins, preventing them from accumulating and causing harm. And made it a hot, bitter tea. And when that bitter tea is in the mouth, it's already stimulating. The message goes to the brain, the liver starts releasing more, the, your parietal glands, the glands in your stomach start releasing the digestive enzymes. Moreover, the bitter compounds in these foods can help regulate appetite and reduce cravings for sugary foods. This is especially significant because excessive sugar intake is a major contributor to pancreatic stress and the development of insulin resistance. By curbing sugar cravings, bitter foods indirectly help to stabilize blood sugar levels, reduce the demand for insulin production, and ultimately protect the pancreas from overwork. This balancing effect on blood sugar is a critical factor in preventing and managing conditions like type 2 diabetes, which is becoming increasingly prevalent due to poor dietary habits. Barbara O'Neill also highlights that bitter foods can improve gut health by promoting the growth of beneficial gut bacteria. A healthy gut microbiome is essential for overall digestive health and can reduce inflammation throughout the body, including in the pancreas. Chronic inflammation is a key factor in the development of many metabolic disorders, and by supporting gut health, bitter foods help to create an internal environment that is conducive to pancreatic health and overall well-being. Incorporating bitter foods into your diet may require some adjustment, especially if your palate is accustomed to sweeter flavors. However, the benefits far outweigh the initial challenge. 
Barbara O'Neill suggests starting with small amounts of bitter greens in salads, smoothies, or as a garnish, gradually increasing your intake as your taste buds adapt. You can also explore various recipes that combine bitter foods with other flavors to create balanced, nutritious meals that are not only good for your pancreas, but also enjoyable to eat. Remedy 3. Start Intermittent Fasting Barbara O'Neill emphasizes the powerful impact of intermittent fasting on pancreatic health, a practice that goes beyond simply reducing calorie intake. So the bad breath, yes, it's because something's not right down in there. There is a cleansing process that is necessary. And one of the most fascinating ways to do this cleansing is fasting. Intermittent fasting involves alternating periods of eating and fasting, which can vary in duration depending on the method you choose. This eating pattern not only aids in weight management but also provides significant benefits to the pancreas by reducing the constant demand for insulin production. When you eat frequently throughout the day, your pancreas is continually stimulated to produce insulin to manage the influx of glucose into your bloodstream. Over time, this constant demand can lead to insulin resistance, where the body's cells become less responsive to insulin, forcing the pancreas to produce even more to keep blood sugar levels in check. This cycle can exhaust the pancreas, contributing to the development of type 2 diabetes. Barbara O'Neill explains that intermittent fasting allows the pancreas to rest during fasting periods. Reducing the need for insulin production and giving the organ time to recover and regenerate. During fasting, the body shifts from using glucose as its primary energy source to burning stored fat for fuel, a process known as ketosis. This metabolic shift not only helps in reducing excess body fat, but also decreases the levels of circulating insulin, which is beneficial for the pancreas. Lower insulin levels reduce the risk of insulin resistance and help the pancreas function more efficiently. Barbara O'Neill notes that this process also improves insulin sensitivity, meaning that when you do eat, your body requires less insulin to manage blood sugar levels, easing the burden on the pancreas. Intermittent fasting also triggers a process called autophagy, where the body cleans out damaged cells and regenerates new ones. Barbara O'Neill highlights that autophagy is particularly beneficial for the pancreas as it helps to clear out damaged pancreatic cells, reducing inflammation and supporting the organ's overall health. This cellular housekeeping process is crucial for preventing the buildup of cellular debris that can contribute to chronic inflammation and metabolic disorders. I had a couple come once. She was 38 kilos. He was 48 kilos. That's not very big, is it? I'm a lonely a little lady. I'm about 48 kilos, but it's a problem if I'd be 38 kilos. <laughs> and it's a problem if a man is 48 kilos. They said, please don't fast us. We're so thin as it is. I said, I need to fast you. Because one of the problems is your gut is not working and it needs a break. Mm -hmm. It needs a break. A very important law of health is rest. <coughs> oh, how many people lay down to sleep at night and there's one organ that is not resting. <laughs> it is the stomach. Additionally, Barbara O'Neill points out that intermittent fasting can help regulate appetite and reduce cravings for unhealthy, high-sugar foods. By stabilizing blood sugar levels and reducing the frequency of eating, intermittent fasting minimizes the spikes and crashes in glucose levels that often lead to overeating and poor food choices. This not only protects the pancreas from the strain of constant insulin production, but also supports overall metabolic health. While intermittent fasting may seem challenging at first, Barbara O'Neill advises starting with a simple fasting window, such as the 16 by 8 method, where you fast for 16 hours and eat during an 8-hour window. Gradually, as your body adapts, you can experiment with longer fasting periods that suit your lifestyle and health goals. Fasting has been done for centuries all through Europe and has been well known to be a a trigger to bring about healing processes in the body. So what I'd like to look at in this presentation is fasting, what it is and the effect that it has on the body. And research is coming out today that is revealing that fasting is doing far more than most people thought. So I'd like to have a look at the different types of fasting. But first of all, what is fasting? Fasting basically in the dictionary says absence of food. 
It's important to maintain a balanced, nutrient-rich diet during eating windows to ensure that your body, including your pancreas, receives the necessary nutrients for optimal function. Remedy 4. Incorporate probiotic-rich foods into your diet. Barbara O'Neill highlights the often overlooked connection between gut health and pancreatic function, emphasizing the importance of incorporating probiotic-rich foods into your diet. The gut microbiome, which consists of trillions of bacteria, plays a crucial role in digestion, immunity, and even the regulation of blood sugar levels. A healthy balance of gut bacteria supports the pancreas by enhancing digestion and reducing inflammation, which can otherwise strain this vital organ. One of the best cultured foods is sauerkraut. And when you culture a food, you increase the B vitamins in them. So it is a good idea to include some cultured foods. What would be cultured foods? Sauerkraut. You can do the sauerkraut and you can also do um, miso, which is like a soybean paste. It's also a cultured food. And your sourdough breads are cultured foods. Probiotic-rich foods such as yogurt, kefir, sauerkraut, kimchi, and miso are teeming with beneficial bacteria that help maintain a balanced gut microbiome. Barbara O'Neill explains that these probiotics assist in the digestion and absorption of nutrients, reducing the workload on the pancreas. When the gut is healthy and functioning optimally, it can efficiently break down food and absorb nutrients, minimizing the need for the pancreas to produce excessive digestive enzymes. Moreover, a healthy gut microbiome plays a significant role in modulating inflammation, a key factor in the development of chronic diseases, such as type 2 diabetes. Inflammation in the gut can lead to systemic inflammation, which negatively impacts the pancreas, leading to insulin resistance and other metabolic issues. By regularly consuming probiotic-rich foods, you help to maintain an anti-inflammatory environment in the gut, which in turn supports pancreatic health and reduces the risk of metabolic disorders. Number one, probiotic. Now the best time to take a probiotic is three quarters of an hour before breakfast because we want it to go all the way down there. And remember what I said in the morning, your pyloric sphincter is open. If you take it with the meal, the pyloric sphincter is shut and if you've got nice strong hydrochloric acid, it could actually successfully just about wipe it out. So we want your probiotic to go all the way down here, which it will do if you have it early in the morning. Barbara O'Neill also notes that certain strains of probiotics have been shown to improve insulin sensitivity, which is critical for maintaining balanced blood sugar levels. For instance, lactobacillus and bifidobacterium, two common probiotic strains found in fermented foods, have been linked to improved glucose metabolism and reduced insulin resistance. This means that by nourishing your gut with these beneficial bacteria, you are indirectly supporting the pancreas's ability to manage blood sugar effectively. In addition to probiotic-rich foods, Barbara O'Neill suggests including prebiotic foods, such as garlic, onions, asparagus, and bananas, in your diet. Prebiotics are non-digestible fibers that feed the beneficial bacteria in your gut, promoting their growth and activity. By combining probiotics and prebiotics, you create a synergistic effect that enhances gut health, supports digestion, and ultimately contributes to the overall well-being of your pancreas. For those who may find it challenging to incorporate enough probiotic-rich foods into their diet, Barbara O'Neill recommends considering a high-quality probiotic supplement. However, she emphasizes that obtaining probiotics from natural food sources is preferable, as these foods also provide additional nutrients and enzymes that further support digestive health. Remedy 5. Add omega-3 fatty acids into your diet. Barbara O'Neill emphasizes the significant role of omega-3 fatty acids in supporting pancreatic health and preventing inflammation-related conditions. It is high in an essential fatty acid. See that word, essential fatty acid, EFA. Whenever you see the word essential, it means the body cannot make it. You've got to put it in. Omega-3 is an essential fatty acid, meaning the body cannot make it. The fact is that no creature can. Only plants can put omega-3 into their fatty acid chain. And what are we told is the highest source of omega-3? Fish. Why are fish high? Fish are high because they eat a one-celled algae that is high. I've got some good news. You don't have to eat the one-celled algae. You can eat the ground flaxseed or the chia seed.
Omega-3 fatty acids, which are essential fats found in foods, like wild-caught salmon, flax seeds, chia seeds, and walnuts, are renowned for their anti-inflammatory properties. These healthy fats are crucial for maintaining the integrity of cell membranes throughout the body, including those in the pancreas. Chia and flax are the highest in the vegetable kingdom of omega-3. Omega-3 is very important because the body loves using this omega-3 for cell membrane function and repair. That's why after your workout in the morning and you sit down to eat breakfast, you really should grind up your flax or sprinkle chia over everything because those muscles that fibers that broke and are rebuilding from your exercise workout, this omega-3 will speed up that recovery time. Chronic inflammation is a major contributor to pancreatic stress and dysfunction, often leading to conditions such as pancreatitis and type 2 diabetes. Omega-3 fatty acids help to counteract this inflammation by reducing the production of inflammatory molecules known as cytokines. Barbara O'Neill points out that by regularly consuming omega-3 rich foods, you can help protect your pancreas from the damaging effects of inflammation, thereby supporting its ability to produce insulin and digestive enzymes efficiently. Do you say, would you say that it's good to have chia or flax on a daily basis? And if so, would it be best fresh or ground? That's a good question. The, the, the flax, I think it's a great idea to have on a daily basis because it's an excellent source. In fact, it's the highest vegetable source of your omega-3s. And your omega-3 is your brain, your brain um, omega, and it also gives a lovely integrity to cell wall. The body uses it for many functions, but it must be ground fresh. If it's not ground fresh, it should be kept in the freezer. Mm. Whereas the chia, it is best soaked. And it is said that it can take up to 25% its own body weight in water. <laughs> so you only have to put a tiny little bit in a jar and mm -hmm. put the and shake it. I know Cynthia, she walks around shaking mm -hmm. it. And then as that, I pour that on, in fact, I have it every breakfast and I pour that all over my fruit. In addition to their anti-inflammatory benefits, omega-3 fatty acids also play a role in improving insulin sensitivity. Research has shown that a diet rich in omega-3s can enhance the body's ability to respond to insulin, which is essential for maintaining balanced blood sugar levels. This is particularly important for preventing insulin resistance, a condition where the body's cells become less responsive to insulin, forcing the pancreas to produce more to compensate. Over time, this can lead to pancreatic exhaustion and increase the risk of developing type 2 diabetes. Barbara O'Neill also notes that omega-3 fatty acids contribute to cardiovascular health, which is closely linked to pancreatic function. Healthy blood flow is essential for delivering nutrients and oxygen to the pancreas, ensuring it can function optimally. Omega-3s help to improve blood vessel elasticity, reduce blood pressure, and lower triglyceride levels, all of which support overall circulation and reduce the risk of conditions that can impair pancreatic health. To reap the benefits of omega-3 fatty acids, Barbara O'Neill recommends incorporating a variety of omega-3 rich foods into your diet. For those who may not consume enough of these foods, she suggests considering a high-quality fish oil or flaxseed oil supplement to ensure adequate intake. However, as with probiotics, she emphasizes that obtaining nutrients from whole food sources is preferable due to the additional health benefits these foods provide. Incorporating omega-3 fatty acids into your diet is a simple yet highly effective strategy for supporting pancreatic health. By reducing inflammation, improving insulin sensitivity, and enhancing cardiovascular health, omega-3s help to protect your pancreas from the stresses of modern living and ensure it functions efficiently.